Hi, today we're going to be talking about resistance welding of bandsaw blades. And there's really three reasons that justify the use of a bandsaw blade welder. And that is, obviously the first, when you break a blade and you want to re-weld it. The second reason would have to do with internal cutting on the bandsaw, where you'd want to purposely cut your blade, pass it into a pre-drilled hole, and then re-weld your blade for internal cutting. And the third reason, well, is money. Now, if you use your bandsaw a lot, or if you have several bandsaws, and you have to replace blades regularly, well, you can save a little money by not buying pre-welded bandsaws and buying rolls of bandsaw blades. And from those rolls, you can cut and weld your own blades and save a few bucks. Obviously though, if you're going to be cutting and welding your own bandsaw blades, you're going to want to cut them to their maximum possible length. And that way, if you have to recut or if they break and you want to re-weld them, well, you'll still have something to play with and you can actually cut and weld the blade several times, losing a little bit of length at each time, but as long as you've cut the original blade to its maximum length. Also, if you've ever lost a tooth on a bandsaw blade, you probably notice that the other teeth start going pretty quickly. And that's because the tooth following the lost tooth is going to have to work twice as much and it's going to break quickly and so on and so forth in an exponential fashion. So if you have a bandsaw welder, it could be a real advantage to as soon as you notice that you've lost the tooth to cut the blade and re-weld it and keep that blade working a little longer. So let's take a look at resistance bandsaw blade welding. So we have our bandsaw blade welding attachment that includes everything we need for welding bandsaw blades. Let's start by looking at this apparatus. It's a small shear for cutting the blade. The surfaces to be welded have to be flat and parallel. If you don't have this apparatus, you can use a pair of snips and clean up the edges on the pedestal grinder. We also have a small grinder to clean the sides and the back of the blade's body. Since this blade has to pass through the guides of the bandsaw, well, we'll have to remove any bumps or irregularities on the surface that were caused by the welding process. If not cleaned up, the blade will jam in those guides. Towards the center here, we have the welder itself and its buttons for adjustment and levers for the welding operation as such. And down at the bottom we have the welder's jaws that are going to hold and position the two sides of the bandsaw blade for the welding operation. So if we're going to weld, the first thing to do will be to cut a bandsaw blade. It's very important that the cut on the blade be as perpendicular as possible to the body of the blade. And that's why I'm going to be using this rest here. And that rest is adjusted so that when I cut, my blade is as parallel as possible. So I insert the blade into the shear and I cut. To avoid damaging the shear, cut between the teeth. Now that I've cut the bandsaw blade and that I have two exposed ends, it's very important that I keep the ends as clean as possible. Not a drop of oil or dirt, we mustn't touch it with our fingers. We have to keep these surfaces clean. If they're dirty, it's going to affect the quality of our weld. We're going to produce here a weld by electrical resistance. So we're going to be forcing the two ends of this bandsaw blade together and at the same time introducing a powerful electrical current. The contact point of this blade is a resistance because at that point, since the blade has been cut, the current won't pass that well. That's going to produce a lot of heat and it's going to be localized at that junction point. That's going to melt the two ends of the blade and if we force them together at the same time, well, we will have welded the blade. Before we mount the blade in the apparatus, we're going to have to adjust and set all the different parameters to get the proper current intensity before we weld this blade. 
we have a half inch by metal blade here so we're going to set our annealing intensity to half inch then we can set our travel indicator to just a little above half inch because the points on this machine are a little worn and finally we can set our welding intensity adjustment to a half inch so everything here is adjusted i can now install the blade in the jaws with the blade's teeth pointing towards me and trying to center as best as possible the eventual gap between the two ends of this cut bandsaw blade, I'm going to install the blade in the jaws and snug it down tightly. I personally like to maintain a very small gap between the two ends of this blade. It helps me with the alignment of the two surfaces that have to be very parallel. Everything's adjusted and ready, so I'm now going to use this lever here to push this movable jaw up against the fixed jaw. So I'm going to be pushing this jaw towards the other jaw. Since the blade ends protrude from the jaw, it's going to bring them together. Once that they're in contact, a set of electric points is going to deliver an intense electrical current between the two jaws. That's going to create an intense amount of heat and it's going to weld the blade together. It's important to note here that this movable jaw is spring-loaded. And that means that regardless of how hard I push on this lever, it's the spring that's going to apply the load. The force applied on the blade is important and the spring guarantees that I apply that proper load. And as soon as the blade crushes, it's crucial that I relieve the pressure that I'm applying on this lever. So let's take a look at that. Push the lever right to the end and let go as soon as you see the blade lurch forward. The blade is now welded, but it is extremely delicate. We've just welded a high carbon steel blade, and that means that the area where the welding has occurred is very fragile and prone to cracking. So the first thing to do before we do anything else is to delicately loosen the jaws that are holding the blade, and then open or space the jaws to their maximum spacing. That's their annealing position. I can then recenter the weld between the jaws and with the teeth protruding just slightly from the outer edge of the jaws, retighten very gingerly the blade in place. I'm now ready for my first annealing. So now I can electrify the blade once again, but this time I won't be using this lever. I'll be using this annealing button. That annealing button will give me a nice constant heat that I'll be able to control. So I'm going to heat the blade up to a nice orange color at the weld point and that will give me a proper anneal because I'm going to let it cool down slowly after that because the next thing I have to do is grind the blade. So let's do it. So I'm going to pulse the annealing button until I see that nice orange color. And then I'm going to continue pulsing, but this time to cool it down gradually. This heating up to a temperature that's past its critical temperature and then cooling down slowly will give us an anneal and make the blade a lot tougher. We can then use the small grinder mounted above the welding apparatus to remove the mushrooming or the excess material that was produced by the weld's compression. But if, like me, you're a pretty big guy, you might find a Dremel tool a little more comfortable to use. Now that I've ground the weld nice and flush to the body of the blade, and that I can see that nice silver color of the blade itself, I can reinstall the blade into the jaws and, pulsing very lightly, just perform a nice 
tempering operation to ensure that the blade can make it around the wheels of the bandsaw without fracturing. Pulse very lightly. All we want here is a nice dark blue color. To ensure that we temper the whole of the width of the weld, we can move it side to side and widen the temper zone. And there you go. My tempering operation is complete and this blade should be quite tough. So my weld is complete and I'm good to go. But before I go and install this on the bandsaw, I'm going to want to perform a little test. And that is to check that the weld will be able to curve around the wheels of the bandsaw. And for that I'm going to hold my blade at about 6 inches from each side of my weld and bend it a little more than 90 degrees. If I can do that without breaking the blade, well the blade will survive the wheels on the bandsaw. And the last thing that I'm going to want to check before installing the blade is that at the point that I welded that there's no bumps or deformation of the blade that will jam this blade in the bandsaw's guides. Everything looks great here, so we can reinstall it and get on with our work. And there you go. Resistance bandsaw blade welding. Remember to have fun, but always work safely. And to all, happy machining. <music>